Thank you. And the final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 8226 in the name of Ben McPherson on unfair police Scotland and fire service VAT charges. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would ask those who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Ben McPherson to open the debate for up to seven minutes, please. I would like to thank the presiding officer for securing debate time on the current unfair situation where Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service are the only, the only police and fire services in the whole of the UK that are unable to reclaim VAT. Thank you also to all members who have supported this motion so far, including many SNP, Green and Labour MSPs. Unfortunately, no Lib Dem or Tories have yet to sign the motion for debate. However, in good faith, I hope Tory and Lib Dem colleagues will take the opportunity of today's debate to show their support for Scotland's police and fire services and get their VAT back. <laughs> Presiding officer, as already mentioned, the present, at present, Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service are the only territorial police and fire services in the whole of the UK that are unable to reclaim VAT from the UK Treasury. This anomaly needlessly costs our public services a total of £35 million a year, unfairly depriving Police Scotland of around £25 million a year and our fire service of approximately £10 million a year. Presiding officer, there is no justification for this discrepancy. It is totally unjust. Presiding officer, paying this VAT means that while the Scottish Government is protecting the police budget in real terms and has increased the operational resource of the fire service this year, while those things are happening, the UK Government are needlessly depriving extra resources from Police Scotland and Scotland's fire service. Resources that would be, would be better spent on frontline services and communities in my constituency and all across Scotland. Presiding officer, some have argued previously that the Scottish Government was aware that there would be VAT implications when this Parliament passed the Police and Fire Reform Act 2012. However, the SNP never accepted or agreed with the position that our police and fire services should be unfairly treated as a result of their merger in 2013. There was no good reason to accept the glaring disparity then, and it shouldn't be accepted now. The anomaly that penalises Scotland's emergency services never made sense in 2012. It doesn't make sense now, and the UK government's rules around this needlessly disadvantage communities across Scotland, and they should and must be changed. The chair of the Scottish Fire Service, Pat Waters, described the injustice of the current situation in the Justice Committee as follows. When the people of Scotland have to provide for major emergencies, it costs them 20% more than it costs anywhere else in the UK. It's not right that it costs the people of Scotland 20% more to get the same protection as elsewhere in the UK. That cannot be right. Presiding officer, there are no reasonable arguments for the UK government to maintain their discrepancy in this matter. Furthermore, there aren't any legal reasons why the current rules and position can't be changed either. Through section 76 of the Finance Act 2011, the UK government have amended VAT rules to allow academy schools to reclaim VAT. And sometime after the mergers of Police Scotland and our fire service, Highways England was granted the ability to reclaim VAT by the UK government by way of the Finance Act in 2015. The BBC is also exempt. Presiding officer, all the UK government need to do to rectify this unfair anomaly is legislate in a similar way in which they've already done so for academy schools, Highways England and the BBC. It would be a very simple process for the UK government if they decided to do the right thing and treat Scotland's police and fire services with equity. Moreover, presiding officer, some have recently erroneously tried to excuse the UK government's indefensible position by referring to EU legislation on VAT. However, as the UK government well know, individual member states have latitude on how they implement the sixth VAT directive. How individual countries operate VAT refunds is principally down to national legislation. Considering all of this, presiding officer, the UK government should and must use the forthcoming UK budget 
to end the unfair disparity towards Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service when it comes to reclaiming VAT and give Scotland's police and fire services parity with other forces in the UK, Academy Schools, the BBC and Highways England. And because the UK government could have made such changes several years ago, it would only be right for the UK government to also refund Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue yeah, Service, yeah, yeah. to refund the 140 million already paid in VAT, which has been taken away from Scotland's frontline emergency services since 2013. Presiding officer, all that's being asked for here is an equitable solution from the UK government. And for that reason, in good faith, I hope all speakers in today's debate will join me in pressing the UK Treasury to change their rules. And that includes Scottish Conservative MSP colleagues. Presiding officer, the Sunday Post reported on the 8th of October that 13 Scottish Conservative MPs in London have written to the Chancellor requesting a change in the VAT rules for Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire Service. I hope Tory MSP colleagues will clarify that point today. And that Tory MSPs will also do the right thing and do the right thing by Scotland and their constituents and join with me and many others in pressing the Chancellor to treat Scotland's police and fire services with equity, parity and fairness. The Tories like to think that they are the party of law and order, but if that is to hold any credibility whatsoever, then they need to support Scotland's police and fire services on this matter. As MSPs, supporting our police and fire officers means much more than words, it means standing up for them as much as we can because that's what this debate and this issue is all about. It's not about grievance, it's about fairness. It's not about party politics, it's about making sure our police and fire officers are treated with parity, to be treated the same as every other police and fire service in the UK. The UK government has said several times in recent years that it will respect Scotland, and treat it with equality. Well, when it comes to charging our police and fire services VAT, then they have yet to deliver. But I hope genuinely that as MSPs together, we can change their minds. Because they should change their minds. They must change their minds. They should change their rules. They must change their rules. And they should change them very fast. Thank you. We now move to the open debate. And I call Murdo Fraser to be followed by Rona Mackay. Speeches of up to four minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating Ben McPherson on securing this debate? Although I'd have to say to him very gently, I think this is a rather unusual subject for a member's debate in this Parliament. The issue he raises is not a new one. It's an issue that we have debated in this Parliament on many previous occasions, and it's hard to see that there is a specific constituency interest that he has, or indeed any other member has. But perhaps I can forgive Mr McPherson. Uh, yes, of course. Ben McPherson. My constituency, like any other, whether rural or urban across Scotland, has policing needs. And this is about making sure that for the whole of Police Scotland, a more effective, a more efficient police service, that, and for the whole of Scottish Fire and Rescue, we as constituency and regional MSPs as a whole surely have an interest in this, in making sure that our services Absolutely. have the resources that they need Absolutely. and deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Margot Fraser. Well, perhaps, perhaps I can forgive Mr McPherson because he was not a member of this parliament at the time the legislation was put through to create the single police and fire services for Scotland. He might not therefore be aware that the issues he's referring to tonight were thoroughly debated at that time before uh, this legislation was passed and the situation we have today has arisen entirely because of the actions of the SNP government. They went into this with their eyes fully open and they are now calling for others to sort out a problem that they themselves have created. But perhaps I can spend a few moments just educating Mr McPherson on what exactly is the legal position here. Section 33 of the VAT Act 1994 allows certain locally funded bodies to reclaim VAT on the purchases of goods and services. I've already taken one intervention, Mr McPherson. I've got four minutes, you had seven minutes. I think you should listen and learn from what I'm about to tell you. Now, these refunds exist in order to stop VAT becoming an additional burden on local taxes. Because police forces in England and Wales are part funded by council tax, they have this right to reclaim VAT. But because both Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service are not 
part funded through local taxation, there's therefore no justification for a VAT refund. So the legal position, Deputy Presiding Officer, is quite clear. It is quite clear today. It was quite clear back in 2012 when these new bodies were created. Correspondence in the public domain that passed between the Scottish Government and Treasury at that time puts that matter beyond doubt. Now, I quite appreciate that both the police and the fire and rescue services would prefer if the £35 million they pay in VAT could be reclaimed. That is an issue for Treasury, and I know that the Chancellor and his colleagues are aware of that. But we should not be in any doubt that the SNP government went into these reorganisations with their eyes fully open and they are living with the consequences of their actions. In debate after debate in this chamber, when the merger was being proposed, opposition parties and other witnesses raised the question of VAT. And yet the government's response at that time was that there would still be savings to be made from those mergers, even with the VAT issue being taken into account. So they were aware that this was going to happen when they went down this route. And at the time, the Treasury even proposed alternative routes to the Scottish Government to try and avoid this very issue uh, being uh, uh, arising. For example, channeling funding for Police Scotland through local authorities. But this reasonable suggestion was rejected by the Scottish Government at that time. Even the trade union unison made it clear in evidence to this Parliament that the SNP went in to these mergers with their eyes fully open, fully aware that the right to reclaim at VAT would be removed. Therefore, any reduction in funding that Mr McPherson so objects to is entirely the fault of his SNP government and no one else. Now, he referred, of course, in his opening... I've already taken an intervention, Mr McPherson, just listen. He said, uh, when he was opening, Mr McPherson said something quite inaccurate. He said this, Deputy Presiding Officer, he said, the only police and fire services in the United Kingdom who cannot reclaim VAT are those in Scotland. That is not the case, Mr McPherson. If you'd done your research, you would know the British Transport Police cannot reclaim VAT. The Ministry of Defence Police cannot reclaim VAT. Well, Mr Stevenson says from the bench is territorial. That word was not used by Mr McPherson in his opening remarks as the official no, report. No, Mr McPherson. So at that point. Thank you. You have to so, close, please. Rather Mr. than indulging Fraser. in water boutery, Mr McPherson, I think you need to accept that your government got this wrong. So, Deputy Presiding Officer, despite all the bluff and bluster from the SNP, the fact is that they have created this problem and they are looking for others to try and bail themselves out of it. Once again, it will be the Conservatives at Westminster who are asked to sort out the SNP's mess. I have Rona Mackay to be followed by Mary Fee. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Firstly, I'd like to thank my colleague Ben McPherson for bringing this crucial debate to the Chamber and I welcome the chance to take part in it. When Ben put forward this motion, he received an onslaught of criticism on Twitter to which I was copied in. I didn't respond to any of it because I prefer not to enter into antagonistic dialogue on social media. But like Murdo Fraser, the main thrust of those who support charging Police Scotland and the Fire and Rescue Services VAT, which results in a loss of £140 million over the past four years, appeared to be, we told you so, and you were warned before setting up a merge service. Presiding officer, my overriding thoughts on these comments were, and always have been, does that make it right? And if your answer is yes, then please explain why it's acceptable that Scotland is the only devolved nation to be hit with these punitive charges. As Ben said, everything Police Scotland or the Fire and Rescue Service buys costs 20% more here than the rest of the UK. This is simply outrageous and unacceptable. Its only effect is to starve our vital services of 35 million per year, which would enhance law and order, justice and safety of the public in Scotland. And the, UK's gov the UK government's hypocrisy in this issue has been astounding. They rightly praise the tremendous work done by our emergency services, while at the same time starve them of much needed resources. They've point blank refused to reverse the VAT charge, despite there being a clear precedent for doing so, as we've heard Highways England and Academy Schools are examples. It's a spiteful and disgraceful way for a national government to act, and there's no excuse for it. Now would be the best time for Ruth Davidson to use her growing popularity with Westminster and the British establishment to do something useful for Scotland for once. And will her motley crew of Tory MPs be standing up for Scotland? Of course not. Why break the habits of a lifetime? I certainly wouldn't be holding my breath for that. 
As for Labour, it's good to see that they finally have come on board, albeit grudgingly, to ask the Tory government to hand back our money. Better late than never. Shamefully, until now, they stood side by side with the Tories and the Lib Dems to the detriment of Scotland. I'm proud, I'm proud of the work these great forces do to keep us safe and well. Last month, I attended the annual review of the Fire and Rescue Service. While discussing the challenges and ever-growing demand the service faces, the much-respected former chairman of the board, Pat Waters, replied simply, we will make it work, because that's what they do and have always done, against all odds. Presiding officer, we need this excessive charge to be dropped. It only serves to hamper the efforts of our police and firefighters. The people of Scotland deserve better. So I ask the Westminster Government to see sense and end this petty, punitive charge. Thank you. Can I remind members they should always refer to colleagues by their full name because that helps the official report. And I now call Mary Fee to be followed by Christine Graham. Thank you, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I start by thanking Ben McPherson for bringing this debate to the Chamber tonight? And speaking on behalf of Scottish Labour as the Deputy Justice spokesperson, we support the, aim of, the aims of this member's debate to protect the finances of our police and fire and rescue services. The VAT, which is placed in our emergency services, is a barrier to our police and fire services recruiting more staff and providing greater protection for both our communities and our constituents. And Labour backs the call for Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service to be exempt from paying VAT, as they were prior to the creation of the single services. However, the Scottish Government must also recognise that it was aware that VAT would apply during the progression of the Police and Fire Reform Scotland Bill. However, the Bill progressed without much progress being made on this issue. And five years on, we still have no solution, and it is long overdue that a remedy is found, and found soon. It's reported that between April 2013, the date Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service started as a single national service, and March of this year, 140 million has been paid in VAT to the UK Treasury. And Labour's analysis shows that when using the lowest tax bill of 23 million for Police Scotland and 9 million for Scottish Fire and Rescue, we could have hired and trained an additional 547 police officers and 223 firefighters. And we support the reintroduction of the VAT exemption and will continue to press the UK government to act on this. In our 2016 Scottish election manifesto made that clear commitment and we also lodged amendments to the Scotland Act 2016 to exempt Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. And today, we remain committed to ensuring unfair tax bills are not forced upon our emergency services. And we know what the solution is, changing the VAT Act at Westminster. And that's the key to protecting the finances of Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and rescue service and I would urge the Scottish Conservatives to press their colleagues in Westminster to make these changes and allow our emergency services to recruit more officers and I would also point out that if the VAT paid to date is refunded as we agree it, it should be it would be good to get a commitment from the Scottish Government to ring fence that funding for reinvestment in police and fire services alone and not to use it to prop up other areas of deficit in their budget. And I would be grateful, perhaps, the Minister in her closing, if you could make some, some comment on that. And the upcoming budget is an opportunity for the UK government to correct this situation. And I support the calls that unite most of this chamber in reintroducing the VAT exemption for our emergency services. Thank you. Can I have Christine Graham to be followed by John Finney? I can, thank you, Presiding Officer. I congratulate Ben McPherson on securing this debate and congratulate two Scottish Labour and the Greens who support the Scottish Government's position of exempting Police Scotland and Fire and Rescue from VAT liability. 
I requested to take part in this debate as I chaired the Justice Committee through the progress of the bill which produced these national services and indeed the first subcommittee on policing and have pursued the VAT penalty ever since. Now, it's true to say, at the time of the abolition of local forces, the government was warned of the consequences for VAT. And whether you agree with that or not, it's fair to say warnings were given. But that is as far as it goes. The reason given was the principle that local authorities, as the paymasters, being exempt from VAT on the service as it existed, the police services and fire rescue services would also be exempted. Well, in my book, and I'm sure in Murdo Fraser's book, a principle is a principle and should be applied without fear or favour. Let's put to one side the pre-existing Northern Ireland arrangements with its single forces exempt from VAT because, as with the one billion handout to secure the DUP's report for May's floundering government, Northern Ireland is always treated differently and in some regards for good reason. But the UK government was in a bit of a bind when it set about promoting academy schools in England as a favoured policy. What to do with the problem of that liability as these schools moved from local authority funding, just like the Scottish Police and Fire and Rescue, to central government funding? Were they just to cough up that, like Police Scotland and Fire and Rescue would have to? Of course not. With the stroke of a Treasury pen, the VAT rules were amended PDQ, and thus from 1st April 2011, a new VAT refund scheme under Section 33B of the VAT Act 1994 was introduced for academies. The scheme, confined to England, permits academies to reclaim the VAT incurred in purchases, imports and acquisitions which relate to their non-business activities. Now, the Police and Fire Reform Act 2012 came into force in 2013. Glance at those dates. 1st April 2011, and academy schools nationally funded are granted suddenly VAT exemptions. Police and Fire and Rescue two years later in Scotland and no exemptions. There is no principle in operation here. Just expediency for favoured Tory policy of academy schools and punishment for Scotland for daring to do something different in delivering a national police and rescue service. What other explanations can there possibly be? Yet, ironically, one of the driving forces, no pun intended, to amalgamate those eight constabularies was Tory cuts and unavoidable efficiency savings. The duplications of eight chief constables, eight deputies, eight chief fire officers to be replaced with streamlined services. It has had its ups and downs, I admit, but the policy was right for a population of just over 5 million and has retained frontline officers. After all, the Met serves well over 10 million. But in England and Wales, it has spent its resources in some 43 constabularies with accompanying a not cheap at the price commissioners and reduced the officers in their hundreds. Scotland punished for streamlining and trying to do efficiency to make sure that we had more frontline officers. English services retaining VAT, spending money on commissioners, 43 constabularies, and believe you me, they're quite like in some instances to follow the Scottish example. It is ridiculous, it's indefensible, and I have to commend Murdo Fraser for dancing on the head of the proverbial pin. John Finney, followed by Stuart Stevenson. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I join with others in congratulating Ben McPherson in, in bringing forward this debate. This is a very important issue, and I think language is, is very important. It may surprise some people, but I suspect not many that know me that I, I wasn't necessarily a, a personal supporter of a single service, but just as um, a former uh, convener of the Justice Committee said, we were driven to that position um, by uh, cuts from Westminster. What I would disagree with uh, Christine Graham on is it wasn't just eight versions of things, there were nine versions and sometimes ten versions. So um, the model that's there is, is a strategic one that sees uh, top level issues like uh, cross-border crime, organised crime, trafficking dealt with uh, and, and of course there is a very significant local um, um, model uh, working. It's not necessarily as robust as I would like to see but there is local input and as I, as I heard someone mention there is actually 
uh, officers directly funded by local uh, government as well, uh, um, unless that's changed in the last time, since the last time we looked at it. But most importantly, there's local scrutiny. Now, I'm very keen to see the highest level of devolved resource management apply. When I was uh, very proud to serve in Northern Constabulary, initially in Northern Borders Police in Northern Constabulary, at the most advanced system of devolved resource management, to the extent that the two police officers in Barra were responsible for their own um, overtime bill. Who better to judge when they needed to to work extra hours. That's proper local policing and there's nothing in this model that wouldn't stop that. Sadly, this became a constitutional issue. And I mean sadly this became a constitutional officer. And, and, and we've heard that um, you were told, as Mr. Fraser said, um, I'm glad that it seems to be less of a constitutional issue than perhaps at one time were. Um, I, I want to talk about my MP. My MP, uh, for a while was um, Mr. Dan Alexander. Dan Alexander was the Chief um, Secretary of the Treasury, um, and thanks to all of you good people, but not me and my green colleagues, uh, as a, a senior member of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, you recently uh, granted him um, privileges and criminal immunity, but there we go. He was very, very busy on the issue of VAT. He grabbed this issue, and I don't just mean in relation to academy schools, he grabbed the crucial issue that was applying in the area and he chased and secured VAT exemption for ski lift passes. Um, now, um, I have to say that community safety, as has been alluded to, is one of the most important things that we have uh, oversight of and responsibility for, and that is our police service and is our, our fire and rescue services. I think we could, we could go on forever talking about, and I suggest we don't, and the presiding officer wouldn't let me anyway, uh, uh, talking about some of the examples, but it is the case that the National Crime Agency set up during Theresa May's time, um, um, which doesn't have local funding um, as, as a, a nationwide body, is exempt from VAT, as I understand it. Now, there are challenges in our rural communities for the fire and rescue services about recruitment for policing. And we indeed we heard today in, in the committee a, 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 a fascinating statistic, namely that 20% of police time is taken up dealing with domestic abuse issues. I, I think we all have wider obligations. I think there are rules, I think there are laws, I think there's democratic accountability and there's public opinion, but there's also political will. And if, the, if there is a will to resolve this issue, I'm, I'm sure we can. Um, I, to some respects, I would say to, to Mr. Fraser and Mr. Kerr, forget where this came from, forget the SNP for once, don't have an obsession with them. Think about what your obligations are in relation to the 20% more that can be done. And that is to improve community safety. And that is providing these additional resources for our fire and rescue service. Fully support the motion. I think first and foremost, let's get it right henceforth. And we'll maybe talk about the back money after that. But please, let's get it right. Thank you. Uh, at this point, can I say that I have a few people who still want to speak. So I'm minded to extend this debate by up to 30 minutes under rule... 8.14.3. Uh, can I invite Ben McPherson to move that motion without notice? Moved. Thank you. Is the Chamber agreed that we should do so? That's, that's agreed. Therefore, we'll extend the debate by up to 30 minutes. And I call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. My contribution will draw on a number of sources, one of which is of the House of Commons paper on police funding, which was published in uh, February 2016, which discusses all the police forces. But perhaps let me start with a letter uh, from the UK Minister, David Gawke, at HM Treasury, which was sent to the convener of the Justice Committee here, uh, and it's dated the 26th of February 2016. It specifically says, as you may be aware, eligibility for VAT refunds for public bodies is subject to strict criteria as set out in UK legislation for the two main VAT refund schemes. And this is the bit that cuts to it. The first, under section 33, referred to by Murdo Fraser and by others, of the VAT Act 1994 allows local authorities and bodies whose funding is reliant on local taxation to reclaim irrecoverable VAT. Right, so that's the position. The second one doesn't apply in this uh, particular instance. The first and obvious one is the Police Service of Northern Ireland, established in 2001 as the successor uh, to the Royal Ulster Constabulary, wholly funded almost wholly funded uh, from the UK Treasury with top up of 22 million a year at the current rate uh, from the Northern Ireland Assembly and permitted uh, to reclaim their VAT. 
Now, in relation to Police Scotland, um, if we look at page 16 of the report on the draft budget 2015-16 that came from our Justice Committee here, we see that 329 officers in Police Scotland are funded by subventions from local authorities. So therefore, there is local authority funding involved in the provision of Police Scotland services. Now, let's go on a little bit further. We've heard a little bit about uh, Section uh, uh, 33 of the 1994 uh, VAT Act. Well, let's actually have a little look at Section 33. And it's maybe just as well to point out that, it, of course, since its original form, and the particular one that matters, it was amended by the Police Reform and Social Responsibility Act 2011, uh, Schedule 16.3, Paragraph 217, in 2012. Now, there's some very interesting and odd things. There are two lists in th Section 33, one for England and Wales, one for Northern Ireland and Scotland. So let me just give you a flavour of some of the things that are on the Northern Ireland and Scottish list. A police and crime commissioner, the mayor's office for policing and crime, and a police authority and the receiver for the Metropolitan Police District. They are on the Scottish list. The Scottish list. But yet Police Scotland is not on the Scottish list. Oh. Um, the British Broadcasting Corporation, based in London, is on the Scottish list. And I, I don't need to go on. The whole thing is a legal and practical guddle that is unsustainable politically, and almost certainly, in the light of David Gork's letter, unsustainable in legal terms as well. So, presiding officer, in bringing this debate to the chamber today, Ben McPherson has given us that opportunity to visit some of the detail that is in uh, the paper that's before us. Northern Ireland, the clear example that shows why we should get our VAT back. Presiding officer, four minutes, you can touch a few things, but I think there's a few things that need to be looked at again. Presiding officer. Yeah, yeah. I call Liam MacArthur to be followed by Marie Todd. Thank you very much, Deputy President. Officer, can I join others in uh, congratulating uh, Ben McPherson, not only in securing the debate, but the passionate way in which he prosecuted his argument. It is, as others have said, a timely debate, not least given the financial straits that both the police service and our fire and rescue service find ourselves in at the moment. Uh, to be uh, clear, Scottish Liberal Democrats strongly support uh, a resolution to the impasse on VAT. It was set out in our manifesto both for the 2016 and 2017 uh, elections. My colleague Alistair Carmichael has written to the Chancellor of the Exchequer um, prosecuting this point uh, as well. And I think as we've heard uh, already in this uh, debate this evening, uh, there <coughs> appears to now be cross-party support uh, for such a resolution. Um, it is also, I think, pertinent to point out the Scottish Liberal Democrats uh, strongly opposed uh, the centralisation of the, the, the bill that created the centralisation of the, Scot the police and fire and rescue services uh, as well. And I think, as uh, Murdo Fraser um, uh, has reminded us, uh, prior to the 2012 Act, police and fire uh, services were controlled uh, by local authorities and they were able to reclaim VAT. The Scottish Government was aware of this at the time of the Act, as, uh, which there seems no uh, dispute. The then Justice Secretary Kenny McCaskill was warned repeatedly of the tax implications ahead of centralisation. On this, as on so many other uh, issues, the bold Kenny was not for listening. Doing the wrong thing for the right reason was the mantra of the day. And over time, Undoubtedly, the savings from efficiencies that we were told would be delivered by Mr McCaskill and his ministerial colleagues simply have not materialised. As a consequence of this, the financial plight of both organisations, Police Scotland in particular, have become more acute. But I, I think, while I would um, perhaps disagree with John Finney on some things, he's absolutely right in pointing us in the direction of where we go now in pursuing a resolution. My colleague, Willie Rennie uh, wrote to the Finance Secretary, Derek Mackay, last year, drawing attention to proposals that at that stage had the backing of COSLA. Uh, this would have involved changing the governance structure of uh, the bodies from an NDPB through to, to a shared uh, local government 
uh, body which would have allowed the centralised structure to be maintained but would at least uh, enable exemption uh, from VAT. Now, there may be other options, there may be changes in terms of the way that the UK government are applying the, uh, the VAT regulations that allow a, a solution to be uh, sought at this stage. But nevertheless, uh, the mess that I would still argue was largely uh, the doing of the Scottish Government's decision to press ahead with this legislation uh, back in 2012. It is, of course, police officers and staff and their, counter, uh, their counterparts in our fire and rescue services who are now paying the price. We ask of these men and women to carry out difficult and very often dangerous tasks on our behalf, and this is a price they can ill afford to pay. So, again, I thank uh, Ben McPherson uh, for enabling this debate to take place, and I do look forward uh, to the Scottish and UK governments now reaching a resolution without further delay that will allow these vital services to be properly funded uh, in the way we would all wish them to be. Thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. I call Marie Todd to be followed by Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you too to my colleague Ben McPherson for bringing this important issue to the Chamber tonight. I sense there are a few points on which we disagree across this Chamber this evening, so I want to focus first on the points that we can all agree on. Firstly, um, Police Scotland and Scottish Fire and Rescue play a vital role in protecting our communities. It goes without saying that everyone here values the, our emergency services. And we're grateful for the hard work and dedication shown by the men and women who work for them. Secondly, Police Scotland and Scottish Fire and Rescue pay around 35 million annually in VAT, which totals 140 million since 2013. And thirdly, Police Scotland and Scottish Fire and Rescue are uniquely the only territorial forces in the UK which are subject to VAT. None of that is disputed. Also not disputed is the challenging fiscal environment we're in currently. We've had several years of Tory austerity and we have more ahead of us. And we now know that Scotland is going to be one of the parts of the UK which will suffer most economically as a result of our withdrawal from the EU. So it's been tough and it's about to get tougher. Scotland's faced cuts to its budget from Westminster totalling 2.9 billion over 10 years. That means that every year the Scottish Government is given a more and more difficult job to sustain the high quality of public services that people in Scotland deserve. We've been told on the Finance Committee, which I'm a member of, on a number of occasions that Brexit will result in budgetary pressures worsening significantly in Scotland. Our police and our fire and rescue services cannot afford to be needlessly denied 35 million per year. And that funding will be crucial to keeping a high quality of service through the financial difficulties that Brexit will cause in the future. Every economist we've had in front of us at the Finance Committee predicts that the economy will shrink because of Brexit. They only disagree on how much it will shrink by. That will undoubtedly put pressure on the public purse. The Scottish Government has repeatedly called on the UK Government to end the glaring disparity in the way that VAT affects emergency services across the UK. Even, if I'm to believe the Sunday Post, the 13 Tory MPs in the House of Common, ha Commons have written to the Chancellor to seek an end to what is, in effect, discriminatory treatment of the Scottish emergency services as far as the VAT rules are concerned. But not one Tory MSP in this Parliament has signed this motion. We've heard already that the UK Government could choose to deal with the anomaly, as they did for Highways England, Academy Schools and various other bodies. They are happy to change the VAT law when it suits them. So it seems it doesn't suit the UK Government to change the VAT laws for our emergency services. That same government that hands out tax cuts to the rich is more than happy to continue taking 35 million every year from essential frontline services in Scotland. Now, last month, we asked the Scottish Tories in this chamber to put their constituents before their party and call a halt to the rollout of universal credit. So far, 
they have failed to do so. I ask them today to stand up for our police and fire service. Will they? The last of the speakers in the open debate is Liam Kerr. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm pleased to have been called to speak in this debate this afternoon. I'm grateful to Ben McPherson for securing it because it allows Parliament the opportunity to correct some of the significant misconceptions and misunderstandings that have crept into this issue and which are inherent in the motion, which might be the reason that the last time I looked, only half of the SNP MSPs have supported it. Uh, the rest presumably having taken the time to inform themselves as to the veracity or otherwise of some of the claims. Uh, it's important at the outset to make clear to Ben McPherson that Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue are not in fact the only forces in the UK unable to reclaim VAT. The members researchers seem to have missed that the British Transport Police and the Ministry of Defence Police are also in there. Didn't the, the he didn't say that in his speech, Stuart Stevenson. John Finney. John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. I I'm grateful for Liam Kerr taking a point. One of them, of course, is funded by the Ministry of Defence. The other takes its income from a commercial contracts, which is uh, with the real companies. Does that not influence? Liam Kerr. The, the key point I'm making, John Finney, is that uh, when Ben McPherson sets up his opening speech and says they're the, this is the only force that can't reclaim the VAT, it's fundamentally on a misconception. Uh, they can't reclaim VAT because, like Police Scotland, they are centrally funded services. I'm not going to have time, Ms McPherson, sorry. One might say these were examples of what would happen when the Police Scotland and the Fire Service were created, and that is the crux of this matter. Organisations which are part-funded locally can reclaim VAT. The idea being that VAT shouldn't be an extra burden on Mr. Local Stevenson, taxes. excuse me, Mr. Kerr, Mr. Stevenson, please stop muttering loudly, is how I would term it, <laughs> from your seat. Mr. Kerr. And that's why police forces in England and Wales can reclaim the VAT, because they are part-funded by council tax, like police and fire service in Scotland used to be. I just won't have time, Marie Todd, I'm sorry. So when everything was centralised, the VAT refund appropriately would cease to apply. Now, this was all explained by the UK government to Kenny McCaskill in 2012. I have got the letters here, which explain academy schools, if you would care to read them. And that will help you to understand what's going on. But the then Scottish government's proposed savings from the single forces creation were predicated on the VAT not being provided for i.e. they budgeted for it and went ahead anyway. So this whole debate isn't about fairness at all. It is about the Scottish Government taking a decision which it now regrets and creating a, a narrative that if the UK Government won't change the entire tax system to sort out their mess, that it is somehow unfair. And then in an utterly brass-necked move, they ask for all the money paid since 2013 to be given back. Money they told the people of Scotland was budgeted for, costed, and would ultimately produce savings. It is an extraordinary piece of spin designed to distract from SNP failures. The SNP are responsible for ensuring our services have the resources they need. But the Police Federation have warned Police Scotland is becoming a response-only service. Thousands of officers have been taken off the streets. Lack of IT is threatening safety of officers and staff. Papers circulated to senior fire service management say the current model is not financially sustainable. Longer response times have been blamed on firefighter cuts. And Audit Scotland have warned the fire service faces a financial black hole. Presiding officer, enough of the Westminster grievance. Let's remember the words of the SNP member at this year's conference. She said, I am angry, Mr. Matheson. I am a member of the SNP. This is not a Tory government in Scotland. This isn't a Labour government in Scotland. This is my party in Scotland, and you are letting down your officers. She's right. Sort it out. I now call the Minister to close this debate. Uh, around seven minutes, please, Ms. Ewing. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I, too, congratulate Ben McPherson on securing this debate and welcome the opportunity to respond uh, this evening, and I hope, in the time available, to be able to, to deal with various of the points raised. And let me begin by restating that this government believes that it is completely unacceptable that our police and fire services face a combined annual VAT cost of around £35 million per year, which other territorial uh, services in the UK do not have to bear. Since the establishment of Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service in 2013, 
The total amount of VAT that cannot be reclaimed is of the order of £140 million. If this situation continues uh, throughout the lifetime of this Parliament, the total cost to the Scottish public purse will be around £280 million, which, to put this figure in some context, uh, is more than the resource budget of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service for a whole year. Leaving aside the intricacies, certainly. Marto Fraser. Well, the Minister for giving away, just for the amount of doubt, will she confirm to the Chamber that the Scottish Government were fully aware when they went down the route of creating these single police and fire services that the consequence uh, would be as it is today in relation to the ability to reclaim VAT? Will she just confirm that is the case? So Annabelle you, Ewing. What I can say to the member is that whilst we were aware of the arguments put forward uh, by uh, the UK Government, we did not accept those arguments, uh, nor did we accept the principle being put forward where we already, where we already were seeing exceptions, exceptions to the rules in terms of changing goalposts, like, for example, the BBC. But I'll go on to the intricacies of that legislation uh, in a moment. But this uh, Treasury windfall of £140 million pounds is something that could be uh, uh, invested in our police uh, service and our, our fire and rescue service and make uh, a huge difference to uh, the ability uh, to uh, uh, respond to uh, the needs of the people of Scotland in terms of their emergency frontline uh, services. Uh, and we have been in discussion with the UK government for over five years on this issue. Uh, and so far they have rejected, sadly, all requests for an equitable solution. When we consider the creation of the uh, police, uh, uh, single police authority uh, uh, and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, the Scottish Police Authority and the SFRS, we did focus on wider benefits that would be attained in moving from eight regional police and fire bodies to single national organisations. We introduced new, more streamlined bodies to reduce bureaucracy and improve the efficiency and effectiveness of these key public services in Scotland so that they could meet the challenges of the 21st century. However, the core functions and purposes of both bodies remain as they were before reform and funding continues to come from the public purse, as is the case with respect to territorial police and fire services across the rest of the UK. As uh, uh, Mr Fraser has just said, indeed we were aware of the implications of that at the time in terms of our proposed reform uh, uh, propositions. But equally, as I said, it was not a position that we either accepted or agreed with. And we have continued to lobby UK ministers seeking a fairness of approach in terms of other uh, uh, changes that they have made before or since. Uh, and I will get on to those in a minute. But why is it the case... Uh, 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 very short intervention. Ben McPherson. Minister, you, you've spoken about how you've been in correspondence with the UK government on this matter recently. I wonder if, uh, as the Scottish Conservatives weren't able to clarify the point, whether indeed 13 Conservative Scottish MPs have written to the Chancellor on this matter requesting a change in the rules. Annabel Ewing. I say to the members, it's not clear to me, because uh, I've not seen the letter apparently uh, referred to in the Sunday Post, but uh, obviously uh, we, we might be able to find that out in the fullness of time. Certainly in terms of the statements made by Tory MSPs in this chamber, it is not looking uh, very encouraging in terms of these MSPs doing the right thing by their constituents and supporting key frontline services in their constituencies. Turning to the VAT legislation itself. Other police and fire services, uh, territorial fire services and territorial police forces are able to reclaim VAT through section 33 of the 1994 Act. Since 2013, the Scottish Police Authority and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service moved to being wholly funded by the Scottish Government rather than being funded in part from local authorities. Notwithstanding that uh, funding process does not precisely meet the highly constraining criteria set out for Section 33 status, this has not proved to be an impediment for other bodies currently contained within Section 33, such as the BBC. Indeed, the BBC does not meet the criteria set forth, including having the power uh, of precept over local taxation, but notwithstanding that, they have been given the ability to reclaim that, and that since before the creation of Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service in 2013. We know also that the UK government has the power to make changes to VAT rules by way of the Finance Act to suit its policy objectives, and we know that it has exercised that power. For example, changes were made to Section 33 of the VAT Act in 2011 following the introduction of academy schools in England and Wales, uh, and we uh, also uh, and welcome the more recent change in 2015 to allow VAT to be reclaimed by search and rescue charities. We note also, presiding officer, that the UK government also made changes to section 41 of the VAT Act to allow Highways England to reclaim VAT, and that as from 1st April 2015, uh, even though it was acknowledged that the existing legislation at the time would not permit the recovery of VAT 
by Highways England. So what did the UK government do? They simply changed the rules to suit their policy objectives. So it is clear, presiding officer, that the UK government has both the ability and uh, the political will, will where it suits it to change VAT legislation. And as we have seen, the BBC was already allowed to reclaim VAT before the establishment of Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. And since 2013, the UK government has changed the rules to allow Highways England to reclaim VAT. Reclaim VAT. So why does the UK government refuse to change the rules for Scottish frontline emergency services? We have heard about the costs that this uh, uh, involves for our frontline emergency services. Uh, every, piece of kit, every piece of equipment costs 20% more for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and Police Scotland than it does for any other territorial police or fire uh, service. Uh, uh, and also, it may be of interest to members to note that in terms of the ongoing project to introduce a new emergency services mobile communications system, uh, a, a vital project that will ensure that police and fire services across the UK and other emergency services can have a modern communication system which allows them all to work together effectively. It is only, only Police Scotland and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service that will be subject to that which cannot be reclaimed. This will involve an additional £50 million over the life of the contract. That cannot be right, uh, presiding officer. In conclusion, I would urge I would urge the Conservatives to use uh, their influence, apparently, with their Chancellor to stand up for their constituents, to stand up for police men and women and fire men and women in their constituencies and ensure that finally we can in, uh, bring this anomaly uh, to an end uh, because it is not fair, it is not equitable, it doesn't uh, make sense in terms of the uh, uh, goalposts having been changed in regard to other uh, bodies. And finally, I would thank uh, members from the Labour Party, the Greens and the Liberal Democrats for supporting this uh, call to end this VAT uh, grab. And I do call once again on the UK government to do the right thing by Scotland's frontline emergency services. Thank you, presiding officer. That concludes the debate. This meeting is closed.